everybody, welcome back to Organic Italian. I'm Brianna and today I have an extra special guest with me. I have my dad, Giuseppe, and tell them what we're going to be making today, Dad. Today we're going to be making la scarcetta in dialetto pomaricano, or in Italian, it's called la scarcella. And uh, this is tradition from uh, my town, Pomarico, uh, which is located in Basilicata, or Lucania, you can call it both ways. And I grew up on it. Uh, me and my sister and brothers, it's tradition from the location in Pomarico. And uh, my mother used to make this uh, every Easter. And uh, it's special because in Italy, um, the day after uh, Easter, it's called uh, La Pasquetta. So, which is a, um, like a picnic. Everybody goes out in the country and uh, we eat this uh, La Scarcella, uh, among with other things, other specialty. So that's what we're going to be making today. And so basically, if in your family you guys make a pizza rustico or a pizza gain, it's something similar to that. It's a pizza dough with meat and cheese, and this one has hard-boiled eggs in it, but it's, a, it's made a little bit differently, and the dough has a little bit of a different texture to it. So let's get started so we can show you guys how to make it. Let's go. So for this recipe, you're going to need sweet, dry sausage, primo sale cheese, hard-boiled eggs, you're going to need um, grano duro flour, uh, levito di birra, and then you're going to need some fennel seeds and then some salt and oil. The biggest thing I want to stress about this recipe is that because it's from Italy and it's measured in grams, you should definitely invest in one of these kitchen scales. It's a great tool to have and it's 100% more accurate than trying to convert things from grams to cups and then you end up with a big mess. So definitely invest in a kitchen scale. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the dough for the right. recipe. Yes. And the first we're going to do it, we're going to mix the salt with the dry ingredient. And this is grano duro flour and he's just mixing the salt into right. it. Start the and then You okay. have your, you want to put your yeast into some warm water and set it aside for five minutes to activate it. So then we're just dumping the flour onto the board here. Okay, now you're going to make like a fountain, una fontana in italiano, a fountain. And now it's time to pour the yeast in. You want to make sure you're not leaving any yeast behind at the bottom of the cup. So if you have to add more water to it to get it out, make sure you really get okay. all the yeast. Now you start to work the flour from inside. Do not go from outside, otherwise the liquid will come out and you'll make a mess all over the place. A little bit at a time. Be patient. Now it's time we're gonna add the oil. The same thing, start to work. Okay, at this point, it's too dry, so we gotta start to add some water. Warm water, no cold, no hot. Make sure it's warm. Okay. 
So you work with the palm of your hands. By the way, this in uh, Italian dialect, Pomaricano dialect, we say we say in uh, dialect trombare or oh, that's in Italian in Italian. In dialect trombe that uh, that means a uh, couple of different it has a couple of different means but for what we do right now, we stick the trumbo la past. So it's nothing like the dialect, <laughs> <laughs> which means uh, in English, work the dog. And so it's important that while you're doing this, you want to just keep a cup of water next to you. So if you see that you added some water and your dough is still too dry, you can keep adding water to it and keep going. Keep going. So you want to make sure you have a cup of water next to you while you're working on this. That's the way it was made when I grew up. Not with machines. Everything was done by hand. See, you got a good Again, workout. You can definitely throw it into a stand mixer if you have a stand mixer, but there's nothing like getting your hands dirty and working with dough, in my opinion. See, at this point, what we want to do, we want to add a couple of inches of, that's it. Fennel seeds. Fennel seeds. Gives yep. a nice aroma. Just a little more. Okay. That's it. Even the taste, you know. And the smell, I wish you guys could smell, smell this right now because the fennel seeds smell incredible. Let's see if we get all wanna get all of it. This it will take a while because you see the way the dough is right now, it's all rough. This it needs to be really, really smooth. It needs quite a bit of work. And uh, like they say in English, it has to be uh, smooth like a baby's butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I want to point, point out that uh, when you work the dough, uh, you stretch it. You stretch it. Again, with the palm of your hands. You work it, then after you stretch it, you or you want to do it, fold it one on top of the other one, and start the process all over again. And again, again, until the dough is very, very smooth. Still, you see the texture; it's not right. So we're gonna keep working on it. I'll show you how. Uh, when it's done, how it's supposed to look. Okay, this is the finished product of uh, Trumbo la Pasta. And you see, it's shiny, it's more smooth. Uh, we make like a, a ball. And at this point, we put on the side. Very important to do cross. On top, this way raises better. At this point, we cover with the ball. 
They will let her rest for approximately about around one hour. In the meantime, we proceed for the preparation of the ingredient. So now we're gonna start prepping our ingredients for the inside. So like I said, it's pretty simple. You just need hard boiled eggs, some sweet dried sausage, and some primo salad cheese. So what are we gonna do with these eggs? Okay, now we gotta slice those eggs. Okay. This way we have a nice slice to be able to put up all, you know, in the colomba. And we have this handy egg slicer, but if you don't have one of these, you can slice them by hand. Just be careful because hard boiled eggs are very delicate. Okay. So show us, give us a there demonstration. <laughs> And voila! There you go, all the slices. See how nice? Okay. Now you can use both way. I showed you, see? It has, you can put a long way, or you can put horizontal, horizontal way. There you go. I usually like to put a uh, vertical way because it has more surface and uh, cover more surface and uh, large carcere. Now, my daughter, you want to continue to do that? I'll the... take over the eggs. So, I got to do something around here, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so for the next step, we're going to slice our primo salad cheese. And if you have uh, Italian parents who saved every appliance over the past 40 years, maybe you have a deli slicer lying around, or maybe you don't. But if not, you can just use a knife and cut nice thin slices of primo salad. You don't want it too thin, but you don't want it too thick. So we'll show you the thickness that you're looking for. Okay. Let's get started. Let's get started. A little noisy, but you know, Doesn't we're so bad. That's the job. There we go. There you go. You see? Nice. Now, if you use one of those machines, you gotta be very careful for your uh, fingers. We don't need the scarcella with uh, fingers. Cut. Okay, this is uh, now the product, the finished product of here. Yeah. And uh, I want to point it out that when I grew up, there was no daily slicer or any other machine like this. Everything was done by hand and it was sliced with knife. And you know, they get so used to that they would do a pretty good job. Maybe even better than the, <laughs> than the daily slicer. <laughs> so now we're gonna get ready to cut our dry sausage. But a little hack that we have is if you soak the sausage in a bowl of water for 10-15 minutes, it makes the skin super easy to just peel right off. Yeah. It has to be warm water and you want to make sure that when you take it out of the water you just pat it dry to get the moisture off of the skin and then we're gonna go ahead and take the skin off and slice it on our good old deli slicer. We make a long a slice long way. Hopefully the hack it will work. <laughs> <laughs> you see? much easy to take it out than when it's completely dry. I guess we can say that it worked. Now we're gonna slice the sausage again. We do it machine because we have it handy, it's quicker. 
but when my parents they used to do again it was everything done by hand and very precise anyway uh, I like this the slice the sausage uh, long way this way gives you a nice slice more surface instead of the cut straight up, across okay and we go you see the thickness and look the surface area nice And we keep going. The dough has rested for about an hour and you've given it time to rise. And also when you let dough rest, it allows the gluten in it to relax. And this allows you to work the dough really easily without it snapping back on you. So the first thing you're gonna do is just take some flour and lightly flour your work surface before you start rolling the dough out so it doesn't stick to the board. Okay, now we bring the dough. There it is. Nice. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut a portion of uh, the dough, like this. Put on the side, split the dough also. There you go. Now you're gonna ask, why I split the dough into pieces and beside that why I left that little piece over there. This piece of here, this little piece, is gonna be used for uh, make some uh, ornament for the scarchet. So you see how we go along. Now we're gonna work only F because it's gonna be the base, the bottom, and the other one it has to be the top to cover everything. So, so basically the major <clears throat> difference between this, di this recipe and a recipe for a pizza rustica or a pizza gain is that a pizza rustica generally has a lattice top where this is completely enclosed at the top. That's why you want to split the dough in half because you have your base and you have your in completely enclosed top. So rolling pin. you get your rolling pin. There we go. There we start. And get to work. Start to work. This way we go this way too. And you keep doing this until you reach the thickness that you need it. A good indication that your dough has rested for the proper amount of time as you can see as he's rolling it, he's not really getting too much pull back on it. So that means, like I said, the gluten has relaxed in it and it's much easier to work with. If you start rolling your dough and you're seeing that you're getting a lot of pullback from it, it's snapping back, you can cover it for another 10-15 minutes and try again. Now remember, you see all those speckles you see? That's the fennel. It's infused into the it's dough. It's infused. There is nothing, uh, you know, fungus going on over here. <laughs> Our dough didn't grow spots while it was rising. That is the fennel seed inside of the dough that's going to give the dough a really nice flavor that goes along beautifully with the cheese and the sausage and the egg. Okay. Um, this is the way the dough should look like after you finish the roll it out. You know, the thickness, you don't want too thick, otherwise then it's too, too much bread, too much dough. But when the uh, product is finished, because now after you bake it, 
it will uh, rise, it will get a little thick. So that's why you don't want it to thick. And then, so basically what you need is a tray about this size, kind of like something you would make a pizza on if you're making a pizza in the oven. And so you want to take this tray and cut a piece of parchment paper and cover it. And then you're going to place your dough on top of here and start building the inside. So you're going to start layering it, you're going to start with your cheese, and then you're going to do your sausage and then your hard boiled eggs and continue from there. So now we're going to take the dough and transfer it onto the tray. You can roll it onto the rolling pin and roll it back off onto the tray so that your dough doesn't break. And now you're going to start the layering process. I want to point that out that one of the reason I like to cover uh, the cooking sheet of here with uh, parchment paper is because it's aluminum and uh, when you heat up aluminum it'll sip a little bit inside your dough and I don't like that. So that's the reason I like to cover with parchment paper. Provides an extra layer of protection between the aluminum and the food that you're going to be eating. So our first layer that we're going in with is our primo sale cheese. Okay. There we go. Now you want to, you don't want to get too close to the board of the dough of the air. The reason why you want to leave about a, an inch, inch and a quarter, uh, or between two and a half to three centimeter in metric. Uh, reason why? Because when we cover um, the dough, you want to have a space that you're gonna stick together. Uh, otherwise, then you have no space and it will open when you bake it. And Beside that, we make a little decoration at the end. You'll see when we get there, and uh, you appreciate it. Okay, we cover the cheese with the layer of uh, sausage. Now, next step, uh, we gotta cover the layer of sausage with the layer of eggs. See, this is the eggs that we sliced before, that my daughter sliced before, and uh, that's it. I did a lot of work here today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> An extensive amount of work. Well, it's, it's a lot of support, <laughs> yeah. moral support. I'm the moral support okay. today. You guys Let's are used to seeing way. me do all the cooking in the videos, and today I'm just the moral support. Well, but uh, I'm proud because, uh, you know, uh, this is tradition and uh, I'm proud to, that you work with me this way. Uh, so we can carry we can on, carry on for mm -hmm. years to come. So there we go. Uh, we got the layer of eggs now. So basically, what we're gonna do now is um, repeat the process. Repeat over the again. process all over again. We gotta put another layer, and I'm gonna stop right there. You know, two layers for me is good enough. I don't want it to overpower too much, but there are people that they put three layer and even four layer. Depends how much you want it, how much salami, cheese, and eggs you want. But I like to keep it that way. That's my preference. So, so we'll repeat the steps over again, and then we'll be done with the inside filling. And I just want to give a disclaimer to this recipe because I do not like hard boiled eggs at all. Like I can't stand them, but. In this recipe, they are absolutely delicious. So if you're someone who doesn't like hard boiled eggs and you're like, this recipe is definitely not for me because that's what I thought the first time you made it and then I tasted it and it was just so delicious because the flavors of everything come together so well for this. So don't be apprehensive to make it if you don't like hard boiled eggs, trust me. Um, basically, we roll the, the other uh, part of the dough. This is gonna be the top, the cover. So now, 
let me roll this on the wrong thing. Okay, I'll bring this and we're gonna call that. Now that we did all that, the door is nice stick together, sealed. Now you're gonna say, what the heck this guy did over here? Hanging over here, hanging over there. You know, the shape, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. Just keep looking. There you go. Now we're getting a paring knife and we go around and we make nice and round or at least we try to make a nice and round so what you say better looks better now all right let's center and we're not done yet now the fun part comes so what are we gonna do now okay now that we left all this empty board on the side of here. Now, some decoration. What are we gonna do to decorate? Simple. We're gonna cut all around. See? And how big would you say those pieces are that you're cutting? Yeah, I would say about a, about a centimeter or uh, three eight of inch so you're gonna cut all around your whole border and then we're gonna show you the next step okay uh, as I said before we got to decorate the scarcella all around so that's what we did we cut all around but now that's not it just the guy now There's what we gotta do there is more. <laughs> what are we gonna do? We lift one of this together, like this. And I want to introduce my uh, special uh, tool, my special utensil for the kitchen that uh, my uh, parents and grandparents they used to use. Guess what? A key. You say, what the heck you gotta do with the key? <laughs> well. This was used back then, what we did, what, what they did, because see, I was watching back then. With this, they fold it and they squeeze down, you see? And you leave one down and one up. And you keep going all around like this. Now, don't get scared and say, oh, well, how am I gonna do this? Where am I gonna find this special tool of yeah well you don't have to use it. this is my thing you know I want to be original I want to be so you can use uh, a, uh, a spoon the spoon the, the the handle of the spoon like for example this and you can do that too I show you just like that see but you see doesn't stick as good as with the key because it's got the plunge on it. Anyway, so this is how we're gonna go this all around, one down and one up, one down and one up, and we're gonna keep sticking with this key. So, okay? like he said, you're gonna alternate the flaps going around, and one will stay lying down, and the other one you will press in, either with a key, if you happen to have one lying around with your deli slicer, <laughs> maybe store <laughs> them together, <laughs> or you can use the back of a spoon or a fork or something like that. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the final product now after the special uh, tool, uh, the decoration. See how it looks all around. It's a beautiful. Come on. Eh? Very, very beautiful. Now, the other step is this. You're gonna get a fork and you're gonna do all, all, all round. 
Why we do the holes? Okay, we do the holes because they will be air inside, a vapor. If we don't do this, what's gonna happen? It's gonna blow up and uh, it's not gonna look good. First of all, they may be come apart too, so you do all that. And beside that, if you're looking at it, it gives you a nice pattern. Looks nice also. So, there we go. I think it's enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, I took the liberty of doing some decoration. And uh, there it is. A, uh, I made a bird. I mean, this is the bird. This is kind of his nest, if you want to say it. So we're going to put it right in the middle. There you go. Nice. Now, what is this bird? This bird, uh, from our tradition in Italy, on Easter, which is Pasqua, we don't use the rabbit. They know the rabbit, the eggs, they don't get along in Italy. The, the dove with the eggs, you know, it makes more sense for us than, you know. So, this is supposed to be a dove. And, uh, you know, we think it looks nice in the middle of the post. It's, it's on me, look, and me. Now, other decoration that I made, just like that, you can put anything you want. Put a star, the bell, you know, the bell for Easter. Another star. Another bell. There you go. Yeah, the bell, the star, the bird. Now, they say we're in America. If you insist with the tradition of the bunny, you can even put a bunny on top of there. Nobody's gonna say nothing. Alright? Okay. So basically, la coloma, or the dove, is the Easter symbol in Italy. Um, unlike here in America, where we use the Easter bunny, again, to make these shapes, if you're feeling extra crafty and you want to hand make a dove like my dad did, or if you have some cookie cutters lying around, you can roll the extra dough that you saved and press into it and just make your shapes and just get really creative with it. I mean, it's your Easter pie, so get creative with it and you can do whatever you want, whatever your heart desires. It's your creation. Now, we got to do some, we made some egg wash with one egg and a tablespoon of uh, milk. So what are we going to do? We are going to do the egg wash this way, mix it nice and shiny. There you go. Look. Ah. And plus, now, we give a little shower to the to the door. This way feels nice and clean. There you go. <laughs> you have to have fun when you're cooking, especially when you've been at it since 11 o'clock in the morning and you're still going. You've got to have fun with it. Yeah, otherwise it's not good. It gets too, you know, if you're grumpy when you do something like this, it's not good. Well, I'm a firm believer that dough can pick up on your mood. Oh, yeah. Dough is a live thing. It has yeast in it. So if you don't work dough with love, the dough is not going to show love back to you. So you have to give it love. It's true. Okay, we're done with the egg wash. Look, it's nice and shiny. Now, it's time to bake. So now we're going to bring it to the oven and uh, 390 degrees, in between 45 minutes, maybe one hour. Uh, the right way to check if it's done, when it's, you see that it's nice golden brown, then it's done. So, but the time, basically, it's around 45 minutes to an hour. So I see you then, I guess, in between 45 minutes to an hour to, fi to see the finished product. Bring your appetite. Ciao. <laughs>
This recipe is definitely a labor of love, but it's so, so worth it because you have a delicious outcome. As always, link down below will be the recipe with all of the measurements and all of the ingredients that you guys need. Thank you for joining me on this episode. And the one last thing, you're welcome, <laughs> but one last thing I want to point it out. I want to thank, thank you, uh, my friend Pepe from uh, Victoriano Construction to build this board This is a for custom us. board. This is a custom board from him. Thank you, Pepe. <laughs> and Ciao, I will see you guys next time. Ciao. <laughs>